bariology. Yeah, and uh, now we go for uh, to a practical tutorial how one can uh, compute all berry curvature, berry connections, and all the derived quantities. Um, using the one year berry code. So, okay. So maybe we start again a bit of why you put I or I somewhere. So again, if you Google berryology with I, okay, I found this page, which is on Instagram, and sells quite nice cookies. I, we couldn't order it, it's somewhere in US, but maybe you can try it. But uh, okay, with, with why, again, you, you can find this book by David Vanderbilt, where this word appears as a, as a title of one of the chapters. Okay, but then you may ask why we put I in, in the one year Berry code. Well, one year is clear where it comes from. So Berry comes from a Basque language and means new. So it's a new one year code. So who, who doesn't know Basque country is somewhere here. Yeah, it's a very nice place. There are some guests from here, uh, from there, here. And uh, also I will join this research community soon. So my advice, if you want to get a position in a Basque country, make some good uh, scientific code and give it a name with some Basque word. They will like it. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, they like it. <laughs> okay, so you already know why we need one year interpolation. So we were showing this figure uh, that w when we evaluate something like anomalous whole conductivity, we often uh, get very non-uniform distribution of the integrated fun integrand. Yeah, so it is huge at some points, and the others it's almost zero. Uh, so and to in uh, evaluate it, we need a very dense, dense K grid. And one year interpolation is something that allows you to interpolate bands with very high precision. So for, for example, uh, even if you have such a tiny avoided crossing somewhere here, Uh, and it is uh, far between the points uh, which you had on the ab initial grid. Still, you can reproduce it uh, with quite a good accuracy if your one-year functions are good and well localized. So that's the magic that we use. And that made the uh, calculation of anomalous whole conductivity uh, possible. Uh, so h h how does one proceed? Uh, basically, it, part of the scheme you have seen yesterday. So you start with some ab initial code, evaluate your block wave functions on uh, some ab initial grid, which is usually quite coarse, and evaluate some metrics elements like spin or position or like overlaps between neighboring cue points, and then you go give it all to the one-year 90 code to construct uh, the one-year functions. Uh, and the, uh, after that, you, you can use these one-year functions to interpolate. So you did it to interpolate the, just the band energies, but also one-year 90 already has this post-W90 part, which also, also implements in, like, calculation of Berry curvatures, integration of Berry curvatures, anomalous hole activity, gyrotropic effects, uh, spin hole, and uh, actually many others. Uh, so, and uh, one-year Berry actually does basically the same. So why at all do we need it? Well, the, the point is also, although uh, one-year interpolation already gives a big advantage over the abelian calculations, uh, for some um, materials it's not enough because we need higher precision, we have more complex material with more one-year more one functions, more whatever. So, uh, so with the one-year Berry code, uh, I managed uh, to make it f f faster, uh, more efficient, and uh, also because of its structure it, and design, I make it. I tried at least to make it easy to the implementation of the new things, and in fact, uh, it already provides a, a toolbox for you to to implement your things without actually. Uh, modifying the code. So you just uh, write a few functions in, in your script and you pass it to Vanier Berry and sh it should process it. And uh, this can be actually seen to, in one of the advanced tutorials today which, called it, which is called Do It Yourself, DIY. 
So the, uh, about the speed, so that's, that's the comparison that I did when I issued the first ver version of the code and uh, published the paper. So you can you can see that uh, Vanierberry performs uh, a lot faster than POSW90 for evaluating anomalous hole conductivity. And uh, the main reason, uh, the, the main uh, trick that I did is the use of the mixture of uh, fast and slow Fourier transform, which I will explain uh, a bit later. And uh, also, also some other tricks, some optimizations. Uh, uh, for example, this uh, scanning of Fermi levels was, uh, well, um, maybe now it has improved in post w 90 but I'm not totally aware. But at that point, it was a very bad scaling with, with a number of uh, Fermi level. For example, you want anomalous hole over a very dense grid, and uh, it, it gets very slow. With one EBR, it's almost the same. Uh, other thing is the use of symmetries. So we can evaluate only the reducible part of the brilliant zone. So what is the thing, the mixed for yet transform. Well, it's a mixture of uh, slow and fast. So what is the problem? If you just uh, ev evaluate the Hamiltonian, so uh, what we do in Vanier interpolation? We have a real space Hamiltonian, so it depends on the uh, R vector, the latest vector in the real space. And at edge k point, we Define, define the Hamiltonian. Okay, it should be H, not X. Uh, okay, uh, actually, not only Hamiltonian, but any other matrix element. And that's why it's a general X. So, in each K point, we so we have uh, some number of R points and some number of K points. We multiply it and get the scale of the number uh, of the time that we need to evaluate it. Yeah, and the. Uh, it takes quite a lot of time, and in post W90, it was just a ma major time. So what uh, one could do is to do a fast Fourier transform. So this figure is taken from the paper about power flow code, well, which is not one year based, uh, more, but has something similar in spirit, but okay, I'm not the user of it, but in principle the same. So what you take your Hamiltonian in real space, uh, then you create a big array of zeros and put your Hamiltonian into the corners and do the fast Fourier transform of this big thing. Well, it's a way to go, and uh, if your k-grid is not too big, uh, it's, uh, it's quite fast. But still, for large k-grids, uh, it, it's problematic. First, because you need this uh, huge array, and uh, it can maybe it just not fit into your memory that you have. And also it's uh, harder to make in parallel and uh, harder to exclude symmetry equivalent points because you calculate all of them. So it has some problems. Uh, so what, my idea was uh, to split the grids. Basically, for example, here we have a eight by eight case grid, but we use it a four by four grid, which is shifted four times. A two by two. So what we do, uh, we, uh, uh, each grid, each color corresponds to some grid. So we use this shift, small k, which is, uh, and to divide this x tilde on this shifted grid. Uh, multiply by this shift, big k. Yeah, and then uh, with the, the resulting thing, we evaluate the, it as a fast Fourier transform. And uh, combined together, it, it, uh, it is first very fast. And uh, you can consider each of these subgrids independently. So you can do it in parallel. So each subgrid doesn't have to know anything about each other. They can work on different nodes of your cluster. Yes, and you, do, you don't need to store them in memory at the same time. If you do, do it in serial, you just go one by one and forget it. So. You, if you run it on a laptop, you don't need too much memory, for example. Uh, second, you can, not the second, but next, uh, that you also can exclude some symmetry equivalent k grid and do some adaptive refinement. So what it is? Uh, 
So we start with some grid, eight by eight, uh, divided into four by four FFT times two by two slow grid. Then we see that uh, the green and the red one are symmetry equivalent. We assume that uh, the symmetry, the system has a four-fold symmetry, for example. Yeah. Well, not every point is equivalent to every point, but let's say every point of the red goes into some point of the green. So if we evaluate some quantity on the red one, we can know what is this quantity will be on the green one. So it's just the same if it's a scalar or it's rotated if it's a vector quantity. So we don't need to evaluate the other one. Uh, now, we calculate only the symmetry irreducible K grid. Uh, what we do next? Because uh, maybe if we do one, a one-shot calculation, and if the grid is not very dense, we can get this blue curve, which has a lot of spikes, which comes out when uh, we have some K points, which are very close to some wild point, line node, or avoided crossing, where the bare curvature is huge. So what we do, we look at the results of each K grid, yeah, and uh, see which one gives like the biggest contribution or the biggest spike. And we refine it. So we substitute the point by four. Okay, in three dimensions, it's eight other points around it. And we distribute the weights around those. Then again, we apply the symmetries and see that maybe here they all, they are all symmetry equivalent. So we again collect them into one but, uh, col and collect the weights of them. So this dot is a bit bigger. Yeah, then we evaluate here and then we, we look again which which k point gives the maximal result and, and refine that. So we can refine one of the new points or one of the old points, whichever gives the, the biggest spikes. And in the end, after some iterations, uh, we can get some this green quite smooth curve. Of course, it doesn't mean that uh, you start from a, any coarse grid and g get a good result after 100 uh, refinement iterations. In general, still, you need to start from a reasonably good grid. But with this uh, algorithm, you can improve your results without going to very dense grids. So an another feature of the one Berry code mm -hmm. is that uh, with the EVA solver, we derived uh, the ways uh, to compute the derivatives of uh, Berry curvature, orbital moment, and uh, other quantities in quite a general way, so we can implement it and in a general way uh, evaluate also the derivatives. Why is it important? Uh, well, first, uh, when you evaluate some quantities, uh, they naturally uh, appear, they, just the derivative of Berry curvature, but also for the so-called Berry curvature dipole, it can be calculated as a Fermi surface property. So the Berry curvature weighted by the de derivative of the Fermi distribution with respect to K. So if you look uh, at, the, at this object, um, basically it gives you a data function of the Fermi surface if, if you consider low temperature. Okay, it's finite temperature, it's some peak, which still is quite narrow. And to get a converged integration, you again need the very dense k-grids. So another way is to convert it by using integration by parts to a Fermi C integral. So basically, you sum all occupied states, which are somehow spread in three dimensions, not concentrated at the surface. But for that, you need to evaluate the derivative at every k point. Without and we found a way, and we, without doing any finite difference schemes here, so we analytically just uh, derive it and evaluate it from one function, and this uh, gives a, a much better convergence. And uh, there is one of the tutorials which uh, shows this. So, mm -hmm. okay, uh, other th other thing that uh, so to make the implementation of new things easier. And we use object-oriented uh, programming paradigm so that uh, uh, we have some modular structure so that you can call some functions which call uh, quite abstract classes. So, and if, you, for example, you can write your own classes based on the classes that we have. So if you are familiar with this type of programming, you can really use it as a powerful tool. 
If not, then you can use it as a usual tool, just by passing parameters to functions and using the standard fun functionality, which is already quite extensive. So I hope we can demonstrate it on the tutorial. Well, if you pass the basic tutorial, and you, you can go to the advanced. So for further information, we, uh, please refer to our web page, which has quite, uh, quite extensive documentation, maybe not re yet complete, but we work on this. So if you have some questions in the future on using the code uh, or problems, you can open issues or discussions on the GitHub, which is the main platform for developers and also for communication with users. Or there is also a mailing list where you can subscribe and also ask your questions there. Yeah, and so the code is free to use, free to everyone. The only payment is the citation. So the more you cite, <laughs> the more we are motivated. So please cite. Oh, so far it's only only my single author paper, but we are preparing a, big, a bigger paper with uh, all these nice people. Some, some of them are in the audience, some are online. Yeah, so when it's ready also, please look at it. I, I hope we will de describe many new things there. So before we go to the tutorial, maybe you have some general questions. Questions? Let's check if there are questions in there. It. So no questions from Adriatico. No questions. Okay, from the chat, uh, also no. Right. Okay then. Okay, there is in the metrics chat. There is a special sub chat about uh, specifically for today. Okay, so no, not so far no questions there, but if you have questions, post, post them here. So I will look, we'll follow them. So, okay, so far let's do. So for today's tutorial, uh, we don't run Vanier 90, so we, we prepared all the files for you. Uh, that's why you can either log into the uh, virtual machine or you can uh, use it on your own. It's not, it's not for you. <laughs> okay. Uh, where is it? Uh, okay, just to show everything. I, I, I opened the virtual machine, but in principle, you, if you installed what I said to install, uh, it should work also on your computer. So we open Jupyter Notebook. Ah, sorry. On on this we should, yeah, we should switch on to, to the um, uh, virtual environment of Python called Base. Yeah. Now you open the Jupyter Notebook. This. And it will open a browser. Good. Yes, it will. Okay, so we have a folder of one year tutorial, 2022 Trieste, and uh, okay, it is here. One day two, W Berry. Yes, so let's start with the, well, the, the, day for, uh, the tutorial for today. Uh, there is a basic tutorial which I will now explain so slowly with all explanations to everyone who is new to this, who is new to Python. Yeah, if you, something in the chat, what is the, di okay, there was a question in the chat which, which I missed. What is the difference uh, between Fermi surface and Fermi C property? Uh, exactly what I was uh, talking that 
we call something Fermi C if it, uh, it is evaluated as an integral over all occupied states. Fermi surface property is something that is evaluated. Yeah, it's not the difference about property, it's about the, the way of evaluation. Exactly. So, but when we evaluate it as a Fermi surface, uh, then we basically only the states that are close to the Fermi surface do contribute, the others are not relevant. So, the tutorial consists of basic and advanced. So, yeah, I will explain in detail the advanced, the basic, but if you go, you, you feel very confident in this, you can go through it qu quite quickly and then uh, switch to the advanced and try to do it yourself and call the Sorry? How to open it? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, 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 sorry. Uh, okay, we are on the virtual machine. You go to the terminal and uh, type Jupyter Notebook. Yeah, I can write, okay, I will, I will write it here. Yeah, but f first you need to, uh, f first uh, on this virtual machine, you, you need to switch to the virtual environment base, which you do by the command work on base. Okay. Okay, so now we open this, and now you go to the proper folder. Okay, we go to the basic. Okay, there are some file, some folders which, well, basically, so what do we have? Vanier 90 files, that's the, uh, we, we did some vanierization of iron. We did it on, uh, okay, I, I forgot the win file, but anyway, you will not need it. So basically, that's all we need to run Vanier Berry. After we ca calculated the uh, Vanier functions, we don't need the AMN file, which is the projections, because we already, projections are used only as an initial guess. So we, we already passed this step. So we don't even need the win file, because all the information is already here in the CHK file, which is a binary, and these uh, text files with eigenfunctions and overlaps. So we prepared it for you. So there is a folder with input, uh, well, basically that's the file, uh, right, there is the win file, if you, if you are curious how we did this, we used 18 vanier functions with SPD projections, this frozen window, just uh, if you want to modify and uh, change it, you can go ahead. Okay, and all, actually we also included all these quantum espresso files, just uh, if you want, okay, this Python file maybe you, you don't need it. It's not. It's not relevant. It's an old one. Okay. And uh, okay. The bands folder. Can, well, we pre-computed the bands from uh, along some paths. We using Vanier 90 and using Quantum Espresso. It's just for comparison of the present results. So we go to this IPYNB file, which is a Jupyter notebook. It's a convenient way, especially for tutorials. Maybe for production runs, or it, it's not very good, uh, but because for production runs you need to write a whole script and submit it to your cluster, and it will crunch uh, the numbers. But uh, for this interactive thing, it's it's actually a convenient thing. So, uh, some preliminary notes that I want to make: that uh, first, uh, maybe some of you are not familiar with Python, or maybe not familiar with programming at all. It may happen, but uh, please don't be afraid. First, Python is easy. It is much easier to learn, I think, than Fortran or C. Uh, second, if you are used to this uh, way of communicating with the calculational codes, like, like you did yesterday, like with one United, Quantum Espresso, that you have an executable that is compiled somewhere, and you have your files with you. you give the files with a list of input parameters, you give it, and you, you get the result and process it somehow by other means. In principle, uh, here you can do the same if you take the examples and use it just as a template. They become for you just uh, a way of uh, inputting uh, 
they just the giving the parameters. But if you learn it uh, more, more uh, then uh, it becomes a more advanced tool, so you can do more things. Um, so, okay, I, I told about Jupyter no notebook that we are using today. Yeah, so the documentation is given on the web page, which is here. You can go here to do. Okay, so there are also some like examples which, may, which are not yet up updated. But uh, we will update it with the examples that you will see today on the, on the tutorial. So the documentation is, uh, has uh, basically every function, every class. For example, you click somewhere and you see, okay, the function, uh, all the parameters that you have, they are described, okay, as detailed as, as we could. We will improve this at some point. So with anything, and the, to, be, to go further, there is a link called source, so you can even click and see how it is all implemented. If you understand this, it's curious, you can go there. So, so yeah, maybe some of you have already used the uh, Vanierberry, and uh, remember that were, there were functions called integrate and tabulate functions. Uh, recently, we changed the interface and now there is only one function run, and basically you can integrate and tabulate simultaneously, in, just in one run. So you do, if you run it on a K grid, if it's not a path, of course, you cannot in integrate over a path. Uh, so and the, the, so so even if you are familiar with, I, I advise you to briefly go through this basic tutorial. So, and this I already said. So, okay. So, no problem so far. You have the files. You have you have it working. So, how do we start a calculation with Vanierberry? So, first uh, in Python, you need to import all the proper modules. Well, it, it depends what you do. But, uh, okay, we have, uh, well, we enter Vanierberry and give it a short name. We can give it any other name, like WB, but in the further, we, we, we call it this way. We call it NumPy, and also the, the, it's a standard way of uh, calling it, well, we need SciPy for some physical constants. Okay, we will plot the figures using matplotlib. Okay, term color allows to print something in color, but it's not obligatory. Okay, these few lines I added just in case if you run this thing twice, because uh, you need to define uh, your parallel environment. You can do it, you, well, with one of these three lines. Either you do it in serial, you, which you call vanierberry.serial, create, you create an object, basically. Vanierberry.parallel creates an object which automatically detects how many CPUs you have, or you can give it manually how many you have. Okay, I think you are not allowed to use more than four. But okay, you can put four here, but I think it will be the same as this. But uh, the thing that uh, it, for parallelization, it uses the module ray, and it, uh, for that you need to initialize the parallel environment, and you cannot do it twice on the same computer. So if you once did it, you need to shut down it before you run it in. Because with this line, if you run this cell twice, it will give an error. So to, in the Jupyter, to run, oh, you can either press run or you press shift enter. And okay, this cell doesn't give us anything. Doesn't, oh no. Okay, it says that we are using Vanierberry version 0 0.13.2, which is the latest for now. By the way, uh, Soon we, we will issue the version which is 1.0.0, .0, which will not be much different from the present one. We just need to clean up and uh, test, make sure that there are no bugs, which we, I hope we will do during the developers meeting, which happens next week. So you can uh, expect some improvements if, if you find some bugs or incomplete documentation. I hope we will fix it. So now what we need is to read uh, the information about the system, the electronic system that we are studying. 
in the and generally if we work with Vanier functions which are generated by Vanier 90 we do it by running by creating an object of type system dot system w90 so what we give it a feed name well basically a feed name includes also the path so we put it in the folder w90 files dot fe yeah and then we have uh, the files fe.ig, fe.mmn, and chk. And, okay, buried equals true means that we need to evaluate the external terms of buried connection of buried courage. That what, uh, was what Eva was talking today. That, uh, in principle, you can neglect these terms, and uh, the error often will not be that big. But to include them, you need uh, this tag that says to include them, and also we include the spin properties. And this use WCC phase, actually that was, you were talking also about in including um, uh, the one centers in the phase factors of the wave function. So you can include it or not, in principle, if you include the internal and external term terms, nothing changes. You may test it, well, it's not done explicitly in the tutorial, but you may check it later if you want. So we run this thing, this cell, press shift enter, you see. So it read the SPN file, which we will need to interpolate the spin properties. Yeah. So basically that's it. We, we just read some files. It says that the recommended FFT grid is four by four by four, which is uh, just equal to the ab initio grid that we used. It, yeah, it's quite a small grid, but always it gives quite reasonable results. And of course, we want to keep this tutorial as light as possible. That's why we don't go denser. So yesterday you were interpolating some bands along some path. You co also can do it with Vanier uh, Berry. Uh, for that, you first create an object called path. Uh, you give basically the nodes of the path, and uh, you give you give the labels to them. They need will be just needed to for plotting, and then you uh, the parameter length is basically the space in between k points. The bigger, the denser you have the k points. So it's you know, like two p over delta k. So if you run it. Oh, it's, just, it's, it's quick, it just creates an object. So if you want to check what the object is, you can like print it, which will give you actually the K points and say, okay, this, this is the H point, for example, like this. Oh, you, oh there are also some things that you can you get, for example, this can give you just uh, the K points, uh, well, which basically you need for the plot when you put all the points along one line. So different things that you can just look. But, and now we go to the running the calculations. So the, the concept of the new version is that uh, we use uh, the calculators, which are also such callable obje objects which call result. Uh, which return uh, some result. So that are uh, quite abstract objects that we defined uh, in order to make the code uh, more flexible. So whatever the result it, it is, if we, we define uh, some properties, like if we know how to add one result plus another or subtract one from another, we can, or, or how we transform it under symmetry, we don't care what is inside, actually. That's uh, the big advantage of this object-oriented programming, rather than just working with fixed arrays or similar. So to tabulate, we create a, a calculator which is called tabulator. Yes, yeah, so, so first, uh, for example, we want to uh, tabulate energy and the berry curvature. So we have this paniaberry.calculators.tabulate.berry curvature. For example, we can we look into the documentation. So what calculators we have now? Okay, we have some calculators to, okay, for tabulating. 
Okay, tabulator all we will see what we need. So we have a basic left tabulator and uh, many other which are derived from tabulator. So far, well, we didn't have time to document them. But for example, very, very courage like or energy, orbital moment, or de derivative of orbital moment. Okay, they will be documented later. Yeah, you just pick them up and you can pass some key, key W arg means uh, key W, uh, key word parameters, uh, key word arguments. So th there is nothing documented because uh, they are just the same as for the tabulator. Yeah, and tabulator has uh, the same parameter, it has a uh, well, okay, we, we will document it properly, what, what is what, but uh, say this is some arguments which we pass to the formula to evaluate Berry Courage. Uh, there will be some examples in the tutorial. And some other which we pass uh, like to the more basic class calculator. So we, we look what we have in calculator. Uh, so far we didn't document anything, but we have such parameters like degenerate, threshold, grammars, well, some parameters. Anyway, yeah, I'm sorry that the documentation is not full yet, but it will be more complete. So that's the way how you can work in, with the documentation when it is more complete. But so far you can just use it. Uh, basically without parameters, everything by default, and it somehow works. Yeah, so, and then we run calculation just to tabulate this quantity, we select well, we can omit this parameter because it selects all bands like, from zero to 17. But that's the convention of Python that you start from zero and end uh, one by n minus one. So a range from zero, zero 18 means zero, one, two, and so up to 17. We have only 18 million, but we, we can also restrict it to smaller number of bands. Yeah, so we create this Okay, not described because we didn't document it yet properly. Yeah, and uh, now we, are, we got everything to run a calculation. Of course, we could just write it in one line. So we write grid equals blah, 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 and this. But just to be more clear, we do it step by step. So basically, that's the main function to run a calculation. So it, you give this, this uh, object parallel, which describes how it's parallelized. You give the calculators. You give uh, on what grid of points you, you evaluate and pass is just a, a particular, <laughs> particular case of a grid. So you just run this thing. Yeah, and it shows like, okay, it estimates how much time left. Yeah, what we can see. Okay, it, uh, huh? Or question, okay, thank you. Uh, you mean on, on the metrics? Or on, on the zoom? On the zoom. No, but we, we answered that. But about Fermi C and Fermi Server properties. Is it, why is it pure? Ah, be, and, ah, because it's on the, no, it is red just because it's on the other computer. Because on this computer I didn't open it. Okay, I will, I will keep it here so that I see it better. If new, new things are right. Any questions here? So you, did you run it? So it, okay. So, so far I, yeah. So far it's easy, you just run and try to understand what is happening. But you don't have questions so far. Okay. So now we can plot the result. To, uh, so this uh, uh, so this function run re returns some co thing, something called the result dictionary, yeah? And which has a dictionary, which inside has another dictionary called res results. And because we named it tabulate, so this, this is not a predefined keyword, it's just the, something that we, uh, that we put uh, somewhere. Yeah, so we named it here. So we can call it 
Trieste. We run it this way. We also call it tree. So all these names are not uh, are not predefined. They are just you can give it any names that you want. So you uh, Ah, yeah. Of course, the same that we that we did yesterday. We forgot. We need to copy this because we are all in the same folder, which is locked from modifying. We cannot create files. So, okay, let's close our Jupyter. Close terminal. This thing. Yeah, so what? Uh, okay. Okay. So th those who work on their own laptop don't have this problem. Trieste. Um, they do. Okay, just copy it here. Again, work on base, and uh, we run Jupiter. Jupiter no notebook. Yeah. Okay, now again we go to the basic. Open it. Now it should run. So, b because before we didn't write anything to the files, we, we were just creating some objects somewhere in memory. But when we started creating files on the on the disk, we got the, this permission error. So you can just uh, go one to this cell one by one and execute them up to where we were. Now we do this run. So what it does, uh, it, it returns some result. Yeah, so we can access it by this result dot result so tabulate that we did. Okay, then we, okay, with NumPy we can load uh, uh, the the pre-computed bands. Then we work. Uh, okay, some there is some factor. It's just because. Yeah, we have. Okay, we define some dimensional factor just because quantum espresso and vanier Berry uh, give the k in different units. Uh, the same was yesterday. I think you noticed that it's two p over a. Okay, that's why we multiply it. We shift it by the Fermi level. And we plot. So already this uh, result that we return already has its function to plot it. Of course, you can just get the data and plot it with your own tools, whatever you like. But it also has something to plot. I'm getting the message calculator not described. Well, uh, it's a yeah, calculator not described is just a message meaning that we did not document this calculator, just we had no time. So it's not an error, it's just incomplete documentation of the code. So how it is done uh, with the code that we write the documentation inside the code and then automatically it appears on the web page. And also it appears in the code uh, when the code writes it by itself what it does. So. We have the bands of the black ones uh, 
the vanillaized bands and the blue dots, uh, the bands from, from quantum espresso. As you see, so for the lowest band, somewhere here up to the frozen window, we have a good match between them. I think if we zoom a, a different scale of energies, we give, get almost perfect match. Yeah, but for high bands, it's, it's not, a, it doesn't match at all. And this is a, the feature of the disentanglement procedure. So we see that everything is fine here. So we can plot these bands. So next thing, uh, we, okay, the same we can do to compare with W90, W90. Yeah, the, the calculations, the type of calculations that you did yesterday. And we just, uh, using this plot routine, so it's called plot, plot path fat. So we, in principle, it can plot uh, also some quantity with the fat band, which we, we see a bit below. And it has some parameters. It, it can save it uh, to a PDF file, also shift. You define the range of energies uh, and uh, some other fat factor. Okay, I will explain. Cut K. So it will cut out the part of the K, uh, K path where you have no bands in this energy range. Okay, close figure, show figure. Well, it's just a common to, to matplotlib. Yeah, if you know matplotlib, you understand what it is about. Okay, and okay, we see that there is no difference between one year 90 and one year berry in the results, and there should not be. Basically, they do the same. In, in performance for this pass calculation also, there is no much difference, I think. Well, uh, well yesterday you already interpolated the bands, right? You did such plot of, plots of bands, right? It's, uh, well, it's a part of the, it's, it is po already post-processing after you cons construct one-year functions. You can evaluate just uh, technically uh, interpolation of bands is in the one-year 90.x executable. There is also this post-w90.x, which I think yesterday you didn't even touch, yeah, which has much more of interpolation. But in principle, yeah, that is post-processing of uh, one-year functions. So, the first step is you construct one year functions and then you do whatever you want with them. Just some of these in, just in the same executable. Yeah, so th there is no difference in this part. Well, because we start from the same one year functions and we get the same energies. Yeah, so now what is, what is the fat, fat band? Yeah, when you put also some dots which symbolize some quantity. So in this case, it is the Berry curvature. Uh, we choose the quantity, we choose the Z component, we choose some factor, and it, it gives us the Berry curvature. Yeah, so we use some fat factor equals four. So if we choose it smaller, so we just get smaller dots. It's just a visual thing. Okay, we can put it five. So we see, well, it's one of the ways to visualize. So red means positive, blue means negative, and the size means I think there is some cutoff and also some logarithmic scale of these both, otherwise they would be just for the whole screen at some points. Yeah, so you see that at some points you have very little berry curvature and at some points you have it huge. So, well, I think it's almost time. Well, we have some 10 minutes. So now, when after just to check that you understood what was in this tutorial, you can solve a problem. Uh, choose a different path, any, anything that you like. Compute, uh, so bands and uh, stuff along that path. And uh, comp compute not, not by the Berry curvature, but the spin, the spin expectation value. So there is a link which uh, suggests which calculator you should choose. Yeah, but you, of course you don't need to plot quantum espresso W90 because you choose a different path it will be different, it will not match anyway. So, yeah, so now you can go and try to do it by yourself. Basically, you need just to copy-paste some parts of the code above to this cell and run it.
you, you can just run everything in one cell. Ah, okay. Well, ah, in the chat of the. Okay. What files are WBerry reading? I need only the CHK file. Well, you need uh, not only CHK. Basically, it reads everything here. So you need IG. CHK because CHK doesn't have uh, eigen en energies. CHK file contain it's a binary file. It contains the this U and V matrices which are used during. Huh? Yeah, not only the CHK file but all, also the eig. Ah, wait. Ah, you don't see it. Sorry. Ah, right because it's. Ah, so you, was it on the screen all the time? <laughs> and you didn't tell me? Great. Uh, okay, is it good this way? Okay, let's put it somewhere here. Okay. So you also, you also need the, well, as a minimum you need CHK and I if you only interpolate the energies. If you calculate, uh, all the internal terms of uh, Berry currency, you also, that's all you need. If you uh, calculate uh, external terms of the Berry currency or Berry connection, you also need the overlap file, MMN. Yeah, if you need to compute the spin properties, you need also the SPN file. Uh, also, there is uh, an extra file called UHU, which you need for special external terms of the orbital magnetization. So it kind of depends. Uh, which properties you need, uh, from that depends uh, which files you need to read. So th that's why we have all these tags here, Berry. So you, yes, you can uh, actually. So initializing a system, yeah, here are some parameters. Basically, berry, uh, okay, morb, yeah, so to enable calculation of uh, external terms in orbital moment and its derivation. Requires UHU file. For example, for spin hole conductivity, depending if it's, okay, which implementation of spin hole, you need either some extra files or just the SPN file. So yeah, it depends. Also, there is a way you can just uh, so Vanianite also can write this uh, uh, this 90 underscore tb dot dot file, which is a text file, which you also can read and basically it also will work. Yeah, it's another. So, well, also you can in principle work with tight binding model. We can directly uh, import a model from a Python tight binding or TB models. About Python tight binding, there will be a tutorial by Sinisha Koch. And uh, yeah, TB model is not represented here, but it's quite similar actually in, in usage. Uh, also, you can Im import uh, Vanier functions from different codes, which are not, uh, for example, AS atomic simulation environment has a, its own way of constructing Vanier function, which is not maximally localized, but they're partly occupied one. And there will be talk by Christian Tigerson later this week. Yeah, also the FPLO, ab initial code, has its own way of constructing one-year functions, and you also can use it if you like FPLO code. So if you know another good way of constructing one-year function, we can implement it, yeah. 
This is done with spin orbit coupling. Yeah. Yes. Uh, only that it is only Z. Really? I didn't plot it. Uh, where is it? <laughs> actually, actually, no. <laughs> well, I, well, I, I, I had then erased it, but oh, sorry, where, where, where am I? Yeah, yeah, I understand. Ah, interesting. Okay, if you let's if you plot just the Berry curvature, does it have a z component? Oh, oh, say an x component. But uh, okay, the question about along which path did you plot? So it's not a symmetric path. Okay, G H. Okay, it should. Uh huh. Okay. Ah, interesting. Okay, first I will plot the. No. Okay, for the egg, for the berry curvature, we have some x, have some y. Okay, let me try. <laughs> Thank you for curiosity, actually. Oh, it, well, I think it's time to go for lunch because... <laughs> yeah, because uh, we have um, a, gr a group photo at uh, 1.30. So we need time to have lunch. And at 1.30, me and Adriatico, we will have a group photo. And then we will figure out what happens with the spin X. Yes, yes. So you go, we now go for lunch here or, or wherever you want. And then take our stuff and go. So we will continue in the same computer room that we were yesterday. Okay. See you soon. Good appetite. <laughs>